Hey, and welcome to this quick start guide for working in Fusion and Resolve. Uh, this is aimed at After Effects users who are going to be doing motion graphics and some compositing in Fusion and want to get up to speed with how to work with nodes. So we're going to look at common tasks you would do in After Effects like creating text, masking, tracking, green screening. I'm using free footage from Pexel's video so you can work along with me. So let's jump in and get started. So let's start by looking at nodes on the Fusion page. I've got a clip here of the stock footage. And so if I take this over to the Fusion page, you'll see two nodes, Media N1 and Media Out 1. Media N1 is the footage. And if I select it and press 1, it loads into the left viewer. If you press 2, it'll load whatever node you have selected into the right viewer. Now Fusion is a very right-click friendly app, which will be nice since After Effects is also similar in that way. So if I right-click, I can come up here and say Rename. So now we have our footage and it's being output. And what I mean by saying it's being output, if you go to color and edit page, it's connected. If you go back to the Fusion page and disconnect this, it is not flowing out of the Fusion page. So it's essential that your footage is going out if you want to see it on the other pages. So we have our footage here and let's say we want to blur it and do some color correction to it. So unlike After Effects, these things happen on a node at a time. So if I select the lights and click Blur here, now I have Blur, and I'm going to press 1 to bring up the Blur. You'll see it's called Blur 1. We could have multiple blurs. I'm going to go over to the inspector and blur this. And the nice thing here is you can blend this to dial this in. So it's not blurry, so it's more of a look. You can also turn on different channels to create you know, creative looks. You also have different quality categories here like you would in After Effects. A really handy thing here is the pen. So I'm going to click the pen. So when we add another node, this is going to stay up here. So I'm going to go back to blur and I'm going to go to color correction now. So with blur selected, I click on color correction. I now have this color correction. I'm going to hit one and you'll see over here that we still have the blur pinned. If you were done working with your blur, uh, you could go over and you could unpin it. And now when you go to another node, you won't see it anymore. So that's a quick way to work. If you go to clips up here, you'll see the clips at the bottom here, and you'll see this little three star shows you it's a fusion clip. And if we go back to our edit page, you'll now see that this video clip has a three star showing us that it's the fusion clip. So we looked at taking one clip to the fusion page, but if we have multiple clips here, they won't go over together. So if we go over the fusion page, we'll just see the green screen. So I'm gonna select the green screen in the background, right click, say new fusion clip. You get the fusion icon, put the playhead over it, go to the fusion page, we now see these two clips being connected with a merge node. And so that's how Fusion works. If you've got more than one input or if you're connecting footage to text, it's going to add a merge node for you. So if I go to Media N1 and press 1, that's actually the background. So hit F2 to rename it. Media N2 is actually the foreground. I'm going to load that into Viewer 1. Rename that. And you can change this order here if, if this makes more sense to you coming from working with layers. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is this, that the green is coming in to the foreground and the background layer is coming into the background. And if you ever need to flip these, uh, you can right click and you can pick swap. Swap inputs and that would swap that for you. So we've got uh, the green screen footage in the foreground. The background footage is in the background. We could also add a mask here if we wanted to and then that's going to the media out. So I'm gonna get back over here and let's say you have some footage and let's say you do something in the edit page, like let's say we want to stabilize this. I'm going to lock it down so you can really see what it does. So now we've made it larger and stable, but if we go over to the Fusion page, we will not see what we've done. So we have to make this a compound clip. So I'm going to right click, say compound clip, I'm going to name it stable, click create. Now when we go to the Fusion page, we see the effect over there. Another type of clip we can create from the edit page is up here, Effects Fusion Composition. So if you drag this in, this is basically giving you a placeholder. You see the three stars here. And if we go over to Fusion, it's just giving us an out. So it's giving us an out to work with. So we could go to the media pool and let's grab some footage and drag it in and then connect it to media out. And then now that would be flowing out. And if we wanted to add other things to this like text, we could now do that. So now let's look at creating some basic text. So we're going to hop over to the Fusion page. Uh, my footage here, I'm going to load it into Viewer 1. We want to right click F2, rename it. 
And now if we select this footage and press the text tool here for text plus, it'll go ahead and will add it for us. So these are commonly used tools up here. The other place you can find tools, if you go to the effects library and go to tools and go to tools here, these are the different tools. So think of these like effects and after effects. You'll see they're broken up into categories. So you're going to use this or you're going to pick, you know, a quick tool from down here or the other thing you can do. I'm going to go back and just remove that there. If I select lights, uh, the most common way you're going to do it to save time is shift space bar. And I'm going to do that and press text. And there we have text plus. Edit. And that will do the same thing uh, that we did here. This is just the quickest way. So shift space bar is your friend. Another way you could also do it if you select your node. You can go here to insert, so we could insert a blur or something else into here. You could also replace it, so this would replace this node with a tool. So I just want you to see how that works. Okay, so we've got our footage, we've got some text. Again, the text is going into the foreground, the footage is going into the background. I'm gonna load the text in the viewer one and just type. So over here in the inspector, you have common adjustments that you would have in After Effects. We could change the size, you change the tracking. If you change something, you can then click on this little dot to reset it. You know, we have our anchors just like you would set in After Effects or Photoshop. You can change the color here. And then if you go over to this little fourth panel here, this is called shading. So we could change the appearance of this here. You change the type to image or gradient. If you go to the second one with lines here, you can also do dashes and dots, kind of like you would do with shape layers and After Effects. You can change the thickness of it. And I'm gonna go back to this first one here, text. So let's just change the color. Change the size. And if I go up here, you'll see that we have versions. So if I go to two and go back to shading, right now it's the same as one. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say our client wants us to experiment with some different looks. So let's say I make this blue. But what I also have is these shading elements here. We're only using the default one. If you go to two, you'll see that there's the lovely red outline. So if we enable that, we will see that. If we go to three and enable three, we then have a drop shadow. So this gives us choices for that. So whenever you switch to these other elements here, two, three, and so on, you have to enable them to see them. So there's a lot of options here. Probably the most likely ones you're gonna be using is Drop Shadow. Okay, so let's look at a couple options for animating the text. I just went ahead and disabled my Drop Shadow. So over here in text, if you look at the bottom, there's a write-on effect, and so we can animate this. So I'm gonna put my playhead at the beginning, go to write-on, right-click, say animate, this turns on the stopwatch. Now let's just make the zero. Now let's move to 40 frames and make the write on one. And kind of like After Effects, it has created a new keyframe for us automatically. So that's what we would get, get a write on effect. So let's look at a more advanced way to animate. Uh, this is similar to the text animators in After Effects. So if you go up to the style text here and right click, you'll see you have a bunch of choices here and we're gonna pick follower. And what this is gonna do is a text by text animation or you know, letter by letter animation. You'll see that it's now turned on a modifier. So up here in the modifier, you'll see there's delay. So let's kick up the delay. And so now if I go back over here and let's say opacity. So move your playhead to the beginning, right click on opacity, say animate, make it zero. Again, I'm gonna to move to like 30 frames and turn this on. And now what you'll see is we have a, a letter by letter animation. And the more you change, you know, this delay, you'll see as I scrub this, this determines how it changes. Now you see, you can do all characters. You could do a range of characters. You could do left to right, right to left, inside out. It's kind of interesting. 
So it'll actually start in the middle and expand. So this gives you a lot of power when you're animating. Now another thing we could do, uh, our text is the foreground, the lights are the background. So when you go to the merge, you'll see here in the merge that the apply mode is normal. So if I change this to something like screen, it now blends in. And so it's applying the mode to whatever the foreground is. So that's pretty handy. So now you'll know how to get to that if you're wondering, hey, where does you know, screen and soft light and multiply and all those live? It actually lives under these choices on the merge. And again, it's affecting whatever is the foreground layer. Okay, so now let's look at masking. So I've got my footage in here that we've been using and I renamed it. So I'm gonna select that node. And if I come over here, you'll see that their mask here, rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and B-spline. So I'm gonna click the rectangle and it gives me a rectangle mask and you'll see it's using the blue input. So that's the effects mask. I'm gonna press one to load the rectangle up uh, and one so you can see what it is. So we could apply a soft edge to this. We could do the border width. We could do width and height. Now a cool thing with this, I'm gonna reset width and height. You can do simple math in here. There's expressions in here like there is in After Effects. And let's say you want the width and height to be the same. So if you go to height and right click, and again, we're back to our little friendly hidden menu. There's so much stuff in here and it's definitely worth experimenting with. I'm gonna to go to expression. And if I just take this plus and drag it to the width, now width and height are linked. So now when we do this, we just get one change. So this is super handy. I tend to use this a lot. So we have a mask now. Let's move back to the beginning. Now we could keyframe this, right? Like, like we've been doing everything. So we could go in and say animate and just make this invisible and then move forward. And again, cause we did the expression, they're linked together. So we can also use text as a mask. So I'm gonna select the rectangle and delete it. I'm gonna click off and create some text. And I just clicked off so I could come in here and go ahead and type it and style it or do anything that I want to it, you know, here uh, before I connect it to the footage. So if we did something, you know, like tracking, let's say, so let's go to the beginning. Uh, let's animate it. Do something like that. And then to here, and I'm just doing a um, simple animation here and not using the followers just so you can see and I get an idea here. So we've got our text animating and let me come over here. So this tab here, you can see, you can turn on motion blur. So this is where you turn it on and this is the quality of it here. So now that I've created what I want with the text, I can connect it to the footage. And so you'll see that it's come in as a mask. So if we play it, that's what we now have. We have that mask. So if we wanted to bring in another piece of footage or if we want to duplicate this footage, we could do that. Uh, so I could go here and, you know, find something else and bring this footage in. And if I drag this to the other footage, it automatically creates a merge for us. And I just want to swap the order. So if I go here and say swap inputs, we'll have our footage on top. So that's using text as a mask and then using simple animation to bring it on. So now we're going to look at performing a key. So I'm going to select both of these clips, the fusion clip. We can rename these clips. Media one is actually the background. So F2, so select the green screen footage, hit shift space bar, type in key, and we want the delta keyer. Now the delta keyer is super smart and it uses what's called a difference key. Uh, we're gonna make a clean mat and it's gonna compare it. So we're just gonna take the lady off the green, it's gonna compare the green and the lady and give us a clean key. So I'm gonna hit shift space bar, type in clean for clean plate, and this is an example where nodes are helpful that I can, I can go out of the green screen footage into the clean plate and into the Delta keyer. So with the clean plate, come over here to the inspector. And for method, I'm going to pick range and I'm going to drag a range here of green. So what we're doing is we're making the clean plate is like the difference here. It's going to look at the difference between the two. So we want to road it so we don't get any edges on her here. And then we can grow the edges. And if we need to, we can click fill. So now we've got clean green that it's gonna compare for the keyer. And this time when I drag, instead of just dragging like this, because it can sometimes pick the wrong connection when you've got multiple inputs like this. Because if you look at the Delta keyer, it's got a bunch. So it's got a clean plate. It's got a solid mat. 
it's got a garbage mat, it's got an effect mask. So I'm going to right click out when I drag now, and when I let go this gives me a menu. And so what we want to pick is clean plate. So now we pick clean plate, there we go. It has given us a pretty clean key because it's just used the green background and pulled the key. So I'm going to load Delta Keyer up to uh, the left viewer here. And instead of seeing the final result, I'm going to go to uh, status, or you can go to mat here, either one. And so what you want to do with this, we want to go over um, here to the mat. And if you start playing with threshold, you want to make sure that she's white, and then you want to make sure that the gray is black, because gray is semi-transparent. So she should be white, her hair should be gray, like places like this, this should be gray, but this all should be black. You can also do clean foreground and clean background. And then if I go back to final result, we should see a good key. So that's the basic workflow of creating a key. We have green screen footage running into a Delta keyer. We made a clean plate, which is then being compared, and that creates a pretty easy key for us using the Delta Gear. So now we're gonna look at performing a basic track. So I'm gonna take this lighting footage back into Fusion. I'm gonna select the footage, hit Shift Spacebar. We're gonna do the regular tracker. There's also a planer and a camera tracker. So we've got the tracker here, similar to After Effects with a point tracker. You get your tracker up here and I can move this around. So we're gonna track this light bulb. So similar to After Effects, this inside area is what it's tracking. Now I'm clicking on the corner to move it. The outside is how far it's looking. So we wanna make this you know, big enough to pretty much contain the light bulb and then how far it needs to look for it. So we set that up. And then over here, uh, we can track forward from current frame. But let's just make sure that we're back at the beginning because I was not. So let's just line that up. And then now we're just going to say track forward. So let's track it. It looks like it stayed on pretty well. Uh, we need to go over here to the second tab here. In operation, we want to tell it match move because we're matching the move. Uh, so what we're going to do is create some text. You know, I just called it lights. And then we're going to put that into the tracker. And you'll see the text follows it. We just need to come over here and put it where we want. And you'll now see we have a basic track. So again, the key components with this, you do the tracker. You know, you just want to select an object that has high contrast and stays about the same the whole time. So this is a point tracker. If it changes, it'll lose it. And then we came over to the second one. It said match move. And then we created text and we just have the text plugged into the foreground. And then we went to our text footage and we just made sure it was sitting where we wanted it to be. And now it's tracked. And, you know, if we want to do stuff we've done to the text like before, you know, we could come in here and do a write on effect and those kind of things. So that was a quick start look at getting up to speed in the Fusion page in Resolve 16. So we looked at how to get to the Fusion page, we looked at creating text, we looked at masking, we looked at tracking, we looked at green screening. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.